Hi, this is Tim Weaver from CMVG. I'm here with, in a confusing turn of events, another Tim, Tim Clark. How are you doing, Tim? Not too bad, thanks, Tim. Good. So, <laughs> bit weird, but... Uh, Hello to any Tims listening, <laughs> also. But, um, Crisis 3, you played it at E3. You're the man to tell us how it stacks up. Yeah, I spent quite a bit of time with it at E3, actually. It was the PC build that I played. It was also the only game that I saw at the show that was being demoed in 3D as well. Actually, there wasn't a single other 3D game there. But yeah, like I said, it was the PC version I played. I used a, a gamepad, because I, that's all I understand. Um, I, and what, how it felt to me was really kind of like the Crisis game that they probably set out to make last time around and, mm. uh, and run out of time uh, to do. It felt incredibly polished. The, the weapon set was really kind of playful and kind of punchy. By that I mean that the dudes weren't like bullet sponges who you had to kind of unload. Like, an entire kind of Korean arsenal's yeah. worth of weaponry into before they go down. Um, so how do the how do the bow and arrows feel in comparison to to the guns of, of the previous crisis? Because they look they look in this in this footage alone they look pretty powerful. They are powerful and they're obviously there to kind of to prevent the stealth side of the game feeling underpowered. I guess yeah. so. You're, you're you're using it in combination with your kind of predator in Vizzy suit. Um, they've got a decent range. They're relatively easy to track in. I guess with a little bit of auto aim. Um, so you, yeah, you cock the bow, and then there was there was a button so you could uncock it without firing if you'd made a if you'd made an error. Mm. Um, but I found myself sort of playing it. I'm, I'm not a huge, I'm not great at stealth, so it kind of went loud quite quick. And yeah. I found myself working through all the kind of different weapons on offer. There was one which had, I think, a rate of fire of 600 rounds a second or something. It was oh, okay. called, I think it was called the Typhoon. They showed off like, they showed off three new weapons. I think that was one of them. There was also a Ceph weapon. Uh, which kind of lobbing um, these sort of pink explosives were a bit reminiscent at times, but as I found. Mm. Um, but yeah, you're playing in a Manhattan and other cities around the US have been kind of domed over yeah. as a way of uh, locking the alien, what remains of the alien threat in. So you're in this kind of a, I don't know if Water World would be the right reference. But it's been overrun by. Yeah, it's kind of full of a. It's like Manhattan, Manhattan ruined Manhattan does tropical. Yeah, I mean, it's probably worth pointing out this is running on a PC. The size of a small city, so that's so it looks amazing. But it'd be interesting. Did you did you you played on? You said you played on PC rather yeah. than on yeah. So it's difficult to say. Unsurprisingly, they weren't look. they weren't showing the console versions. Uh, I mean, it obviously won't look as good as this. But um, Crisis Two was no slouch in the in the graphics department, so maybe it'll stack up. But it's interesting the 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 the, the, the relationship between. Because now we're back onto guns, and in the sort of pre, the the, the sort of build up to this this demo before E3, they really emphasised how the, the bow and arrow was going to play such a a big part of the game. But I don't know; it just looks like it's been revert. It's reverted back to. It felt more like it was there just to have like something new in to tinker around, but they didn't feel like it was yeah. an essential part. I mean, bear in mind I played like a half hour chunk, so maybe there's other bits that rely on it more heavily. This was a you had to kind of. You're being kind of fed these uh, mission goals as you go along, and you have to go in and blow up something that damaged the set somehow, reduced their shield capacity to 60%. I can't remember, but yeah. that was the gist of it. But what I felt was the there seemed to be the structure. It seemed to be much more kind of um, it seemed to flow much more nicely than than Crisis One did, which, mm. which felt quite uneven to me at times. Yeah, it's, it just seemed like really slick and blockbustery, which which is what kind of gave me that impression. That it, had that sense of the finished article, whereas two was a bit more uh, a rush to get out of the gates. And you, I think I think um, Crytek, by their own admission, said that having it be the PS3 and 360 versions was a bit of a struggle yeah. for them to come to terms with getting their engine running on that on that tech. It's I guess the big question is how this this is going to stand out against a absolute raft of of other shooters at the show. I mean, the the overriding uh, theme of the show is people getting stabbed in the throat, things getting destroyed, things blowing up a lot lots of people dying uh, and it's you know it's, it's how, how, how do you think this stands out other than the fact that it looks amazing it's obviously got the looks but I think the, the other thing in its favour is well there's two things really one is that the weapon set is really good and the second is that your own abilities is profit you've got you've got the, the hardened nano skin you've got the kind of uh, the invisible suits I can just see the hardened skin he's doing now there with the, the little uh, hexagons around the edge He's also got this air stomp move where you can jump up and kind of slam down and take people out at close quarters, which is fun. You do feel like this kind of a nano-enhanced super soldier uh, in a way that's some of the more prosaic kind of 
Man, yeah. man in Iranistan games like yeah. he's other Medal of Honor title. So it still is the suit really that brings it for, for for Crisis. I think so, yeah, and I think as with every aspect of the game, it, that feels more effectively um, executed than ever. And it reminded me, I think if you're doing an FPS these days, you need to be doing something like a Dishonored or like eventually Bioshock Infinite, where you've got some creative ideas and stuff for the player to to muck around with and and explore in terms of powers, because just having Guns and a grenade button. I don't think it really cuts it anymore. I think people are getting pretty tired of that. He says, as, he, as a chap plants an explosive on a pipe that you've seen for a million <laughs> times. Helicopters as well. That was a, the other theme for me of E3. It was all bows and arrows and helicopter pilots being blown up. There are a lot of helicopters. Don't uh, go into the chopper trade, kids, is the message from uh, this footage. 